G'day everyone, Dicko here with another kick-ass walkthrough. This is part six of our multi-part series covering modeling for animation. And this is a long one everyone, so strap in, grab a drink, get comfy, and pay attention because I think this might well be the most comprehensive video on facial topology on YouTube as of the time this thing was published. I could have split this up into multiple parts, but I figured that would be a detriment to you and to me, and I didn't want to do any more editing, so fuck that. And as you can see, this is what we start off with. It looks like trash, it's just a mess, and then it turns into this. Ready for animation, good for rigging, great for doing facial expression, and all that fancy pants stuff that you would want from an animation character. And with a little bit of planning and experimental thinking, it joins up seamlessly with the rest of the body that we completed in the previous videos. And before we jump into the modeling side of things, I want to do things properly and explain why we're going to do the things in the way that we're going to do it. So to start off with, I want to talk about how we structure the changes in direction around the face with our edge loops. The face itself has many twists and turns in terms of its muscle structure and the way it flows around the face. And these changes are represented by these five star poles around the structure of the face. And generally speaking, they are in these locations. The tip of the nose bridge, the corner of the eye on the outside, the middle of the cheek, the point in which the nose meets the cheek, and the upper cheekbone. And all these five points represent changes in direction of the musculature of the face around the eye as it transitions into the cheek, the jaw, the nasolabial crease, and the mouth. And what you end up with when you start working out your edge loops is this general pattern of a sort of pentagonal shape around the eye. And within that pentagon, you end up with continuous edge loops to fill out the upper cheek, lower eyebrow, and the eyelids. Now for the mouth, we have a similar situation. We end up having a sort of star down there near the change of the direction of the musculature near the jaw and the mouth. And I've painted one of the stars blue because it's kind of a circumstantial sort of change of direction. So it depends on how you structure the cheek and the edge flow of the mouth. The same can be said for this edge loop that I'm about to create here with this green line. Um, this one can be optional, but I like to have it because it helps to frame the eyes nicely. And I find when I animate squints and smiles that this loop really helps to keep the structure in line. And for the most part, this ends up being the sort of intersection in the change of direction between the cheeks, the forehead and the mouth. For the mouth itself, I like to have one edge loop that goes over the nose and then around the chin to form that nasolabial crease, which then in turn gives us a nice way to nest in the edge loops for the lips. Now let's talk about the overall structure of the eyes and lips. So what I like to have when I model my eyes and lips, I like to have a degree of symmetry throughout the structure of the upper and lower lips and eyelids. So I like to consider the area of the eyelids to have four general quadrants. So the upper left, the upper right, the lower left, and the lower right. So I'd like to make sure that there's a degree of organization there. And that applies to the lips just as much as it applies to the eyes. And we'll get into that in more detail soon. Along the cheek, this is pretty much the only place where you'll get sort of a meshed like structure. So a quadded up structure that is pretty uniform across the board. There's no loops there, so to speak. And then we have a overall loop that travels around the face to sort of frame the jawline and the forehead. Now let's talk about one of the most important parts of the face mesh, and that is the amount of spans between the upper and lower eyelids and lips. Now some people will say you need a very specific amount to at least get the right amount of deformation, but I think that's kind of bullshit and it's circumstantial to whatever you're building. But there is one thing I like to keep consistent, and that is an even amount of spans on the top and the bottom of the eyes and lips. So if there's 10 spans on the top of the eyelid, I want 10 spans on the bottom of the eyelid to match. And that makes rigging way, way easier. And you can see I've kept that symmetry across each four quadrants of the eye. So in this case, I have three spans in each quadrant. And there's probably some modelers out there that are thinking, oh man, that's just too pedantic. But my response then is, fuck you, you try and rig it then. By having that nice symmetry between the upper and lower eyelids and mouth, rigging is way, way, way easier. And I say this with absolute conviction because I've had to rig my own shit for years, both professionally and on personal projects. So you can see here, what you should end up with is this nice circular infinite loops around the eye. 
So if you have any spiraling going on, that means you fucked up and you need to rebuild it. And of course, just like the body, we will have a span that goes right down the center line of the face. And that is a non-interrupted loop. And that means no stars in the center line of the face because, again, it's a total nightmare to work with. And you can have a single loop that goes around the nose and that will help you build out the structure if you want to. And it also provides the necessary volume you need to extrude out the tip of the nose and the nostrils. And with the way that I build out the structure of the cheek, I usually have a span that ends up traveling from the eye under the nose. And for some reason, it just works better for me. Um, it deforms better. I think it's a cleaner mesh and the distribution of the quads around the cheek and the intersection of the lips tends to be a bit cleaner, in my opinion. Though I will say this is not the be all and end all in terms of edge flow design on the face. In some cases, they can just travel down to the opening of the lip, but that's up to you. And speaking of the lip, we have a edge loop that sort of follows the nasolabial crease of the face. So that's the crease between the nose and the lips and the cheek. And inside that, we're going to basically have some infinite loops that sit within that um, nasolabial crease to form the lips. So just like the eyes, we end up with that sort of infinite loop structure that isn't spiraling. So if it's spiraling again, you fucked up and you need to rebuild it. And you may notice on the top corner of the upper lip, I've added back in that five star pole that gives me that change in direction that allows me to build out the uh, muscle structure of the lips. And then we have again, an identical amount of spans on the top and bottom lip with a lot of those spans traveling up the nose to the skull. And we can reduce those polygons uh, at the base of the skull as we build out that topology. So here, just to demonstrate even amount of quads across the top and the bottom lips. And then some more spans in terms of edge loops going around the structure of the lips to fill those out. And that's about it when it comes to the overall structure of our edge flow on the face. And you can make some concessions when it comes to this sort of design. You can look at other people's uh, approaches to this, but generally speaking, the underlying pattern is usually the same. Uh, and again, I'm just adding some loops here just to show how the ear is connected. It's basically just a, you know, extrusion of faces basically. But again, there's plenty of ways to sort of adapt this to different designs. And um, you know, if you have to add nostrils, for instance, you just have to think cleverly about where you place that extrusions for the nostrils. But yeah, this is the general structure we're aiming for, for our edge flow going forward. And it's really important that you grasp the, the reasoning behind it all. Otherwise you're gonna get really lost very quickly. Okay, let's jump into the actual modeling process. So we're gonna create a single plane and then edit, edit mode, we're gonna split it in half and delete the other half. And then we're going to basically mirror that with a mirror modifier. So we have a mirrored version of that plane. So we only have to model one half of the body. All right. So just line that up. And then we're going to turn on snapping to faces in the menu there. And then we're going to quickly grab each vert and sort of align it with the circumference of the eye. And again, let me reiterate, this is not the only way to do this sort of shit. If you have a better way or a way that you find more comfortable to do, then go ahead and follow it. But as long as you get that structure right, it doesn't matter how you build it. All right, I turned on in front in the viewport settings for that object so I can see exactly what's going on without any obstructions. So I'm just splitting up that quad again into one half and I'm just blocking out the sort of area in which the eyes are gonna sit in. So I'm getting that, that sort of pentagonal structure up and running as early as I can. So these five corners are basically going to represent that change in direction that occurs around the structure of the eye. And here I am just being a little bit pedantic about the placement, but you know, it can be rough. It's rough and ready. We're just blocking out things at this stage. I added another subdivision and now I'm going to inset to create that first loop that represents the eyelids. And then I deleted those inserted faces. And now I'm just going to make sure I have a symmetrical amount of spans across that structure as always. So making sure that's nice and clean. So the top and bottom should have the same amount of faces on the top and the bottom. And now just shaping those verts individually. 
to make sure it's nice and clean. And as always, we're not working with a lot of geometry at the start. We're keeping it nice and simple so we don't get lost inside of all that uh, complexity. Okay, once you're happy with that uh, shape of your eye, we're going to extrude out our first span that goes from the eye and under the nose. Turn on clipping so it doesn't overlap. And this will make sense as you see it unfold, but basically it will help us structure out the um, the nose and the nasolabial crease to get that working the way we want. And it's at this stage that you can, if you want to, add a skin wrap modifier to your mesh and it will help just keep the uh, mesh sticking to your underlying sculpt. Okay, we're going to add a single subdivision to the top and bottom lip on the inside of the eye. And I'm going to extrude inwards to the center of the face to bridge the gap between the eye. By which it's also no coincidence that it also forms the bridge of the nose. All right, I'm also going to extrude one span down, down the center line to help us form the structure of that mask loop we talked about earlier. And watch the pattern of extrusions I just did now. We're creating that first star pole that I talked about during our little analysis, i.e. it's our first change in direction from the eye loop into the sort of cheek loop that we talked about earlier. And of course, let's take some time to sort of just reposition things to make life a little easier. Okay, let's uh, block out our next change in direction, which we're going to extrude a single face up and to the side and fill out that bridge of the nose. So as you can see, we have our second change in direction on the upper eye which interfaces with the bridge of the nose and the forehead. And now let's just do some extrusions on the side of the face to get that mask shape up and running. So we're just going to fill out that loop. I'm going to merge some verts to keep that flow up and running. So you can see that loop taking shape and we're going to, and then we're going to close off that loop by filling up that bottom face. And now if we check our first successful loop we got that mask shape up and running we got our inner loops of the eyelids up and running so now we can start to worry about filling out the uh, cheek area so let's get that nasolabial cheek up and running so we're going to do some extrusions there we're going to uh, fill up that top of our loop there with a few extrusions and fills and as you can see if I select that face loop we're building out our second loop around the mouth which will form our nasolabial crease so just a few extrusions around the circumference of the lips and we've got that loop going around the mouth just as i planned at the start of the video again just a bit of cleanup just repositioning a few verts to uh give me an idea of where i want that crease to sit so thickening that up a little bit now let's construct the loop that will form the structure of the lips. So just extrude inwards and there we have it. We have our fourth major loop up and running. Are you beginning to see the pattern arise? I know I bloody am. So again, just spending some time to rearrange some verts, not adding any extra geometry, just getting that structure in where I want it to be and making sure it's all very consistent. So you can see the symmetry arise in that lip loop there. And I've added a new loop in between that nasolabial loop to sort of add some more structure to the face. So now we have all these loops designed exactly where I want them to be. So with the existing loops now in place, let's add some structural spans across the lips and the face. So as you can see, I'm making sure I'm staying consistent across the bottom and top of the lip. I'm making sure that all those um, loops are staying consistent. So I'm just now structuring those verts in place, just moving them around to fit the form of my face. So again, adding a few more spans across the eyes, making sure it's consistent across the top and the bottom of the eyelids. And that could take a little bit of trial and error, just getting that right. So you can see I added two loops in between every major span except the edges there. And the amount of spans that you add is completely up to you. It really depends on what you're building this for. If you want less spans or more spans in mind, then go for it. As long as you have that underlying structure going on, it really, really doesn't matter because we've already blocked out those essential loops for the eyes, mouth, and cheek. 
And this is especially important if you plan on going for a low poly look or a high poly look or you know, you're building this for a game asset or a VFX asset, the amount of extra geometry you add can really make a difference in the uh, presentation of your model. So be conscious of what you're building it for. And as you can see, I'm just making sure that I'm consistent across my loops. I'm making sure that the spans are equal on the bottom and top. And now I'm just rearranging some of those verts to make sure I get that underlying structure up and running. And now I'm adding some loops to form the lips and eyelids. And these basically just serve as structural or volume enhancing loops. They aren't gonna be cycling around the entire body. They are basically infinite loops within those spans. And now of course, we're starting to extrude out that cheek and we've made that fourth pole, just where we said it would happen in the middle of the cheek. And for the bottom of the chin, we're gonna build out the structure of the jawline and again, we're about to extrude out that next pole that changes the direction of the mouth and cheek structure into that jaw structure. And with a few extrusions here, I'm building out that gridded structure for the cheek mass. And just rearrange that a little bit to get it looking a little bit more even. And now we're about to make that loop that travels around the circumference of the face. So with a few edge extrusions, I'm going to map out that structure and then just fill in that gap. And now we're starting to get that facial loop that goes around the entire jawline and around the forehead. And if you didn't notice during that process, we just created the fourth pole that intersects the change of direction between the upper cheekbone and that lower corner of the eye loop. And now I'm just extruding out some edges to be able to fill out that forehead structure and get that final loop that travels around the entirety of the face. And now I'm just jumping into sculpt mode to just smooth out and even out that quad structure. And with the um, skin wrap modifier turned on, you can see it's sticking to the mesh quite nicely. Obviously there's some niggles there that we have to fix up, but that's okay. And you can see that wireframe there. We're getting that structure exactly how we described it at the start of the video. And of course, just make sure that your center line is nicely merged and there's no overlapping or clipping issues with the center line of verts because that's potentially going to become a real problem if you don't keep an eye on that. So you can see there's a bit of overlap. So we're just cleaning all those up, making sure they're not overlapping. And you can really see that structure take hold already at this early stage. So now's the time to sort of apply that first skin wrap modifier and then make a new one because then we can sort of fix in the current geometry in its place and then allow it to sort of breathe, so to speak, when we sculpt upon it or move things around. It's kind of hard to explain, but if you try and ex experiment with it, you'll understand. So now's the time we can potentially start working on the nose. So very simple sort of structure with this stylized character. All I gotta do is sort of make an extrusion toward the center and then rearrange the verts to fill out that nose. And the nice thing about this method is that at least with this stylized nose, um, there's a continuous loop that forms that structure. So I don't have to worry about cleaning up or redirecting any loops. All the volume for that nose is sitting within that loop structure, which is really nice. And this simplified approach to building up the nose is perfect for something like a, I don't know, like an anime character, a stylized Disney style character that doesn't have nostrils, that kind of thing. If you plan on adding nostrils to your character's nose, um, you may have to look up how to sort of work out that loop structure. It could be as simple as adding some extrusions to the nostril, or it could be something more complicated but it really depends on your research and how you approach that in a problem solving manner. So adding some extra edge loops down the center line of the face to fill out that nose. And I'll link that up with the lip loops. So now we have a nice clean amount of spans going across the center line of the nose down to the lips. And we're just filling out that quad structure, fix, making sure it stays as a quad structure by adding a few spans and then filling. So that's looking pretty good. With the shrink wrap modifier enabled, we're just gonna sort of sculpt out that nose a little bit, let those um, faces and uh, verts relax a little bit and get a more even quad structure across the, the face. 
And of course, make sure that center line structure is nice and clean so there's no overlaps. I mean, that's the worst thing you want when you start uh, modeling. Adding a few loops in the center of that nose to keep that structure nice and voluminous. Smoothing out with a few soft brush strokes of the smooth tool in sculpt mode and applying that shrink wrap modifier so I can more evenly distribute those faces. And then adding a new shrink wrap modifier. And you can see how much that makes a difference when you apply it every now and then and then reapply a new modifier that is. So using the uh, sculpt tools to smooth out the distribution of those faces, you're gonna get a nice even distribution of the mesh across the face. And that's really what you want across the board. And of course, once you've done sculpting out and smoothing out those uh, vertices, just chuck on another shrink wrap modifier and keep on moving. So now I'm just adding some extra volume where necessary. I might add a few loops around the jawline and the forehead. But that, of course, is uh, optional for you. Uh, you don't have to do it. It's really dependent on your model and the design you're working on. So long as the uh, loops aren't spiraling out of the control, you're onto a good thing, I think. So you can see I'm modifying the existing geometry that I have to sort of prepare for the next stage of the modeling process, which is to fix up the, um, the skull and the neck. So I'm just sort of lining things up to where I think they ought to be. So where verts should lie. And now I'm going to extrude out around the circumference of the ear. And the faces in which you do this is completely up to you because it depends on the design you're working with. So it doesn't have to be these exact faces that you're extruding from. So long as you do it in a clean and orderly fashion, it doesn't really matter. So my whole philosophy about uh, consistency and symmetry also apply to the ear. So I'm going to keep these spans identical across that giant hole that will become the ear. So two spans on each side in this case. And I may want to alter this in the future, but you know, if it's enough for your model, that's okay. And that hole will become the basis of the extrusion of the ear in the future. But first, we're going to work out the structure of the skull and the neck. And right now, I'm just basically cleaning up my geometry a little bit. Just put them into place where I think they should lie. The, um, the back of that hole of the ear should sort of sit behind the ear for that future extrusion. So just getting that in line and just, you know, playing with, with what's already there. Okay, it's now time to block out the top of the scalp. So I'm going to extrude some faces up and over to the top of the skull. And I'm going to have it meet at the center of the skull and merge using that mirror modifier. Add a few spans to fill out the volume there. And the skin wrap will do a good job of that. Apply that, make a new modifier, and we're good to go. All right, with that overlying structure up and running on the top of the skull, it's now time to join it up with the front of the face. So we have to add a few spans and be a bit clever about this. So there's going to be a... So this is where that final fifth pole from the eye, where the change of direction from the skull to the face happens. So that, 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 last, so that last piece of that pentagon structure of the eye comes into play right now. So ultimately what I'm trying to do is create a loop that goes around the crown of the skull. So you'll see that happen as I sort of fill out this structure. You can see by the way I redirected those faces, those loops are now sort of traveling around that circumference of the skull. And you can see me turning off and on that, that skin wrap modifier and sort of playing with that, evening out the uh, quads, making sure it's nice and clean and even. Adding another loop around the jawline, using that as a structural uh, loop as well. And of course, fixing up that center line, making sure it's not all fucked up. 
So there's the front of the skull done. Now it's time to do the back. All right, so I want to make sure that those three spans that I created or four spans that I created that go around the top of the skull travel in the same direction around to the back. So I don't get any like redirections of faces that, um, you know, flow around. So I'm making sure that there's a consistency in the front and the back of the skull as well. And you just notice that I also added a change in direction at the back of the skull to be able to, you know, get those loops traveling in a way that I want. And I'm sorry if the video footage is a little bit fast, but if I was playing this at regular speed, we'd be here all day. So if you ever have to look at this and just take a pause, just pause the video, inspect my uh, method here, and then continue on from there. Okay, now that we got that change of direction put in place, I'm just filling in some faces that we can now continue the spans over the top of the skull down to the neck. And obviously by the look of things, it looks like we have way too many faces going down to the back of the neck. So we'll have to fix that in the future. So just smoothing that out again, making sure that distribution is nice and clean. As you can see, I'm starting to get some niggles there. So apply that shrink wrap, reapply it, and then move on. Fix up that center line again, as always. And sometimes the shrink wrap modifier can get in the way of that. So sometimes you just gotta apply that shrink wrap and then fix it after the fact. So apply it, fix up that center line, and then you can bring back that shrink wrap if you want to. Okay, now there's clearly way too much geometry that's going to be traveling down the back of the neck compared to the front. So we need to reduce the amount of geometry that travels down so to do that, we're going to collapse a few um, spans into this structure that you see here, similar to the hands actually, and then we're going to delete those um, extra loops. So we reduce that ge geometry and effectively clean up the, um, the back of the head. And the reason I do this on the top of the skull is because this top of the skull isn't going to deform or isn't even going to be seen. So having some um, redirected loops up there aren't really going to affect anything in the long term. And now we can sort of fill up that back of the skull with the, the right amount of spans. So just count the spans you need to fill it with. Fix that up. And then start off by filling up that center line. And then we have four spans at the edge of the ear there. So I'm going to add four spans to the, um, the side here, the middle. And now I can just grid fill that with the right amount of spans and we're good to go. Perfect. Nothing too fancy for the back of the head. All right, let's get that neck up and running. So we got to fix up the bottom of the jaw first, like the flesh underneath the jaw bone. So we're going to have that travel around like the um the jaw is already doing now and then we'll extrude out the neck after we do that so just getting that structure in follow that same uh, edge flow from the uh, the front of the jaw there fill that in with the appropriate faces just like that all right and now we're pretty much ready to extrude out a neck structure. But first I might add a little bit more volume to the base of that skull before I extrude it out. Making sure that's all good to go. So yeah, just adding another loop just around the base of the neck before I extrude out the neck. And of course, this is entirely up to you how you do this. As long as you got that underlying uh, edge flow working, it doesn't really matter. All right, just smoothing that out now. Just getting that up and running for uh, our neck extrusion. And of course, the neck extrusion is probably the easiest part of this whole process. Just extrude down and then add some spans.
once you're happy with that extrusion just add some spans and then sort of sculpt in or you know strip wrap that again depending on whether that works it's up to you um just get that next shape up and running and we can move on so throughout this video you might notice me applying and then removing and then applying the mirror modifier as well um, sometimes it's useful to apply the mirror modifier so you can smooth out the sculpt out on an overall basis and then sort of delete one half and bring it back. Um, I find that to be uh, a pretty effective way to fix up certain sort of things like the neck and the, uh, the, the gap between the eyes. So again, you can see me just cleaning up a few things. I've applied the mirror modifier temporarily just so I can work through the existing geometry, smooth things out. Uh, make sure it's nice and clean. So the distribution of the uh, the faces are looking pretty good so far. So now it's time to remove one half of the face and I'm going to bring back the mirror modifier so I'll continue on the ears and the mouth. So for the mouth, we're just going to pull down the existing geometry for now just to get it in line with the opening of the lips. So like um, the eyes, there is a certain point in which I like to make sure that there's a level of symmetry. So there's, you know, four quadrants involved. So making sure you understand where the corner of the mouth is and where that sits is really important. Choosing the right uh, vertice to represent that is also really important. So a lot of people starting out doing faces almost accidentally extrude the uh, lips out in an incorrect fashion, like almost with a square fashion rather than a loop. So try to avoid that. So now that we've got that structure in place, we can add a few more loops. And just using um, vertex snapping with, uh, or face snapping with the magnet tool, we're just uh, snapping up those lips to get that structure in there. And the lips themselves require quite a bit of volume as well. So um, don't be afraid to add more loops um, to the lip structure. They aren't going anywhere. They're just going to be cycling around themselves. So as long as they're not spiraling out of control, you should be fine. And again, I'm adding some vertical loops down the center line of the lips, just so I have some more volume to play with. And again, this is optional for in your case. So it just depends on the kind of design you're working with. And that's the tricky thing about faces. I can't exactly handhold you through the entire process step by step with every tool. And there are other tools that can make your life easier as well. I mean, obviously there's the new poly build tool that I'm not using in the entirety of this video. So if you find tools that are more comfortable to use or you wanna try something different, go for it. But yeah, going back to the structure of the face, it really depends on the design you're working on. So, you know, that's why it's really important to understand the way that the loop structure works, because at least then you can adapt you know, the poly building to your own design and understand where the loops lie. So all things considered, the instructions I gave you at the start when we analyzed our mesh at the beginning before we built it is actually more important than this process of me showing you how to actually build it. So understand the concept before you jump into the execution. But enough of that, going back into the modeling process, you may have noticed that I actually deleted some faces at the top of the ear hole. So I actually deleted some uh, faces to give me some more geometry to play with when I extruded. So I extruded out the ear shape. And now in a very basic kind of way, I'm just shaping out the, um, the ear based on that extrusion. And it looks kind of shrecky at the moment, but that will be solved momentarily as we start to optimize the geometry. So I'm just selecting the faces um, on the bottom and top of the ear and just flattening those out because I plan on grid filling that like so. So just selecting everything there. And this is why having symmetry is so important because now I can just grid fill and have no issues with that process. So I'm now just repositioning that ear to match the uh, orthographic views as much as I can. And I'm also adapting from the sculpt and the um, the orthographic view at this point because the shrink wrap tool with uh, stuff like ears and eyes and mouths, it doesn't work very well with that method. So now it's really about modeling by eye rather than relying on the sculpt. So I'm adding a few loops to the ear structure along the vertical to sort of add some more volume. 
And this is not the only way to build the ear, mind you. I mean, if you've got something more realistic in mind or something like that, uh, this method might not work for you. So um, really studying how you can break down that um, extrusion and the way you build out those loops is really important when it comes to the ear. And I, I will admit, I had to construct this ear about three times before I got something that I liked. And yeah, it could be a real pain in the ass. I think the ears are probably the hardest part of the entire process, to be honest. So now I'm just trying to work out the process in which I want to um, get the inner ear up and running. So I'm going to select these faces of the inner ear and then inset them a little bit. So I have some extra geometry to play with. But we run into an issue. We get a six star at the corner of the ear. And for some people, this would be fine. But for me, I can't stand the idea of having them. So I'm going to redirect some of that geometry. So I'm merging um, at the edge of that extrusion or that inset um, some verts. And then I'm going to delete um, that new line of edges that we created um, with that insetting. And then it's just a matter of redirecting the, um, the edge flow of the upper and lower ear to flow into you know, the rest of the mesh. I mean, this probably isn't the best way of doing it, but um, for me, it was the cleanest way of doing it. So I'm trying to make sure that the edge flow of the upper and lower extra edges are s s keeping that mouth um, symmetry up and running. So now I'm just redirecting some flow with the knife tool to make sure that all works out. So I've eliminated that um, that sixth edge star. And I've also effectively added enough geometry to the ear that I can start working on adding some volume to that ear on the inside. And now it's just a matter of first cleaning up the, um, the extra geometry that I added to the cheeks and the mouth. So I'll probably sculpt that O's out and smooth them out in a second. So yeah, just uh, fixing up that alignment of our edges so it's all consistent and clean from the top and bottom. So it's a bit of a process just to smooth that out, redistribute those faces a little bit. Yep, bringing back those cheeks. All right, so now on to the ear again. And because my approach for this ear is fairly stylistic, my method is also going to be pretty simple. So I'm just going to select some faces that I want to uh, get the inside of the ear up and running. And then I'm going to sort of basically just extrude out some faces to get that inner ear up and running. So that little bit that I haven't selected becomes a little lobe of the inside of the ear. And then I just basically work with that geometry to get the shape that I want and smoothing and adding some loops on the inner ear to uh, get that smoothness the way I want. And that's about it for this ear. Very simple sort of structure. But if you're going for a realistic ear, this is probably the worst method you can go for. So again, um, depends on your uh, design. So do the research, find the right edge flow and do your best to get the result you want. And um, yeah, I mean, honestly, there could be a whole video series just on retopoing the ear alone. So just think about that when it comes to designing your own characters. So just be aware. Now that I've got enough geometry, it's just a matter of just sculpting that, you know, that shape of the ear to the style that I'm looking for. So yeah, just a quick little loop inspection, making sure everything's up and running and good to go. So as you can see, not much in terms of uh, complexity in the loops. And this one I found kind of interesting because it loops in the exact same way from the bottom lip to the bottom of the eyelid. So it actually terminates in the same spot respectively. Um, you can see we have the loops in the lips up and running perfectly um, structured. We've got the loops around the eyes. 
exactly how we described it at the start of the video. So now we're at the end game here. We just have to add some eyelid structure and some inner mouth structure. So yeah, not that far from done. And making the eyelids have more structure is pretty simple. Just extrude out an edge loop into the eye socket basically. And then you can repeat that a few times just to make sure that strength of the, uh, the structure is there. But that's all there is to it. Very simple. And some people like to actually merge these uh, edges into a, into a star at the back of the eye, but I hate doing that, so fuck that. And again, this is an optional thing. I like to splay out the back of the um, the edges to sort of have a sort of clef on the um, on the inside of the eye. Just helps maintain some volume, I, I find. If you're going for a realistic eye, you most likely have to think about more edge loop structure stuff around the corners of the eye, like the uh, the tear ducts and stuff like that. So be aware about that if you plan on doing some realistic. Um, character design. So now it's on to the mouth bag as they call it. So basically we're going to simulate the inside of the mouth with, um, you know, extruding out a sort of bag like structure for the inner lip. So I'm just extruding out some faces to get that inner lip structure up and running. And it's really important that we have this because it helps maintain the volume of the lips when they open and close during animation. So just playing with the verts now, trying to get the uh, that sort of fleshiness up and running around that inside of the lip. And then we're going to extrude out a series of faces that sort of end up terminating as a sort of, you know, a mouth bag, basically. So now that I've got that overall lip structure out the way on the inside of the lip, it's time to extrude. And because we're effectively recreating the, um, the throat of the character, we want to have some extra um, sort of cavern for the tongue and the teeth to sit inside once we get around to modeling those. And that will be in another video or two. And I'm following the curvature of the neck a little bit, and I'm just gonna terminate it just at the top of the throat, because you know, obviously you don't need to go that far. Now I'm just turning back on the mirror modifier and then I'm just going to clean up a few things, make sure there's no, uh, you know, intersections or anything like that, just like we always did throughout this video. Clean all that up and uh, yeah, then move on. And now before I finish up mirroring this object, I'm just going to clean up some mesh stuff, make sure the distribution of faces is nice and clean throughout the model, and uh, just avoid any uh, fuck ups. And you can see I've probably fucked up one bit there from a few attempts at mirroring, so I have to fix that up in the future. But for now, 
just cleaning up that mouth bag, sculpting that down, getting the roundness in there. I mean, that's just me being pedantic, you don't have to do that, but you know, it's useful sometimes. And now, with that mirror modifier applied, I'm going to grid fill that throat. Make sure you got the, um, the, the grid fill working properly so you don't get any spiraling. And that's the face done in a nutshell. Now it's just a matter of just a bit of polish, adding lips where you need it. And yeah, just cleaning things up as we go. And let's just bring back our original model with all those notes written all over the face. And let's inspect it in comparison with our newly made model. And look at that. All those loops that we talked about at the start of the video are all present. The loop around the nose and the chin, the lips, the five points of um, the change in direction around the eyes, the meshed structure along the cheek, and the span or the loop that goes around the entirety of the face. It's all there. And this is why having a firm understanding of the principles of edge flow for the face are so important. Okay, the final part, attaching the head to the body. So, pretty simple affair, I guess you can say. I mean, there's some planning involved, but that's all right. So first thing I'm gonna do is erase or delete the neck as it was on my original face mesh for the body. I've also extended it down a little bit further so I have a wider hole to work with. Smooth that out a little bit. So now we have that sort of clavicle shape going on. Extrude up to get the base of our neck up and running. And now it's time to join the, um, the head to the body. So select the head, select the body, control J, and that will join it together. All right. So first thing I want to do is, again, I'm going to bring back the mirror modifier. So we have only half the work to do. And then the second thing, I'm going to add a few spans down the center line of the body. See? See how useful it is? And I'm sure some of you didn't believe that it would be so important. But there we are. All right. So first, we're going to merge the front and the back of the neck. So we know that at least that center line is working across the entire body. All right, I'm just gonna clean up that crotch just a little bit so in case we merge again and you know, I don't want those things to merge on itself because of that clipping attribute we have with the mirror modifier. All right, so that's all good. All right, so continuing on to the neck, we're going to merge the center line of our arm down the center line of our neck. So we have it travel up the neck down the center like so. Okay, so here comes the tricky part. So obviously at the base of our neck, we have way more edges than we have at the top of our shoulders. So we need to actually figure out how to reduce the amount of edges at the base of our neck there. And we have a similar problem at the front of the neck, but the solutions for the front and the back are different. So at the front of the uh, neck, we're going to redirect some edges to flow around the base of the neck and then back up the neck to the face. The nice thing about that method is also it kind of uh, simulates the muscles between the neck as well, which is kind of nifty. I mean, it's not fully accurate, but it does the job. So you can see there, I just extruded a change in direction there. So that will allow me to get that, uh, that redirection of faces down around the neck. Fill up that edge there. And look at that grid fill and we're good to go. So we're pretty lucky with the amount of difference there at the front. So um, the back is a little bit more different. There's way more edges at the top than there is at the bottom. So um, what we need to do is collapse some edges. So similar to what we did at the top of the skull, we're going to merge three spans and then delete two spans at the bottom there. Count our edges, count the top and bottom, see if it's all working. No, we need to, we need to actually um, reduce it further at the top of the neck. So we're going to do that once more to reduce those spans. Select those two spans at the bottom. And now we have a nice clean amount to work with. So if we fill that in now, 
Should be pretty lucky. One, two, three, four, five. Done. Yes. So that's about it. Now it's just a matter about cleaning up the uh, distribution of those faces, making sure it's nice and simple, quad structure, nicely distributed and looking appealing. So the neck needs a little bit of work, sculpting that, that neck a little bit. I applied the mirror modifier in this case, so it made it a little bit easier to sculpt. And especially those spans down the middle of the body now, we need to uh, redistribute those a little bit, make sure they're evened out along the back and the front of the body. But this is pretty much the end here. I think we're pretty close to done. Just, you know, adding volume where necessary, of course. Because we've added more geometry down the middle of the body, so it's time to clean that up a little bit. Redistribute those vertices along the back. And that should be plenty enough um, geometry there to sort of add some sort of volume to the back as well, so. You know, take some time to modify the back and, you know, fill it in, sculpt it out, you know, get the, the shape you want. And again, I'm doing the same thing for the neck as we speak. And the neck looks a bit long, so I might bring that head down a little bit. But otherwise, we're good to go. And here's a little test with uh, Mixamo. Obviously, Mixamo doesn't do face animation, but it can animate the head a little bit. All right, so in about, what, an hour's worth of tutorializing, we've gone from a headless jack to a person with eyes, ears, mouth. And that can be animated and rigged now. Look at that. Ah. She's dancing. She's dancing. And that's how you retop our head in a nutshell. I know it's going to be frustrating the first time you do it. You're going to run into different kinds of problems, and you will have to problem solve on the go. But I think you can pull it off, and I'm looking forward to what you achieve. So until then, catch us, and have fun.